So why are we so sure that the structural reform agenda, as advertised, will have the effects that we hope? So if it doesn't, the way we're going to get out of this is basically through the macroeconomic counterpart, which is Donald Rumsfeld. That's the bit where you're meant to go, what the fuck? No? Okay, you remember him? No, you're all too young. Donald Rumsfeld was the Secretary of Defense during the time when America decided to invade enemy of the month number 17, who at that point was called Iraq. And he said when he wasn't getting the support that he needed from France, boo, hiss, that there was an old Europe and a new Europe, and he was interested in the new Europe, not the old Europe. Well, you know what? He's right, but not about war. He's right about exports. So here's a funny little factoid. Last quarter, the Eurozone as a whole ran a trade surplus against the rest of the world. Means that as a whole, the Eurozone is exporting more than it's importing. But look at those numbers. 26.4 billion, but 24%, 24 billion of that comes out of Germany. Now Germany's 30% of the Eurozone, but they're not three times more efficient than everybody else. So how can Germany possibly be 90% of the variance? Well, the answer is this. Have a look at the supply chain. So have a look at the Czech Republic. One third of the Czech Republic's exports go straight into Germany. One third of that third is one category of exports, vehicle parts and body parts supplies for the auto complex, run through all of those countries. That's the new supply chain for the German auto complex that sells me diesels that lie to me. But they're very good cars and everybody buys them. So these guys are gonna be great off the system because they, de they never had big welfare states, they're not Sweden. They're post-communist societies that implicitly trust markets and distrust the state. And basically, they have a lot of skilled, relatively young labor that's mobile. And investment rates are very, very high there because they don't have trade union protections and all the stuff that you've got here in France. And they're making money hand over fist. So as far as they're concerned, everything's fine. Now, remember the Greek crisis in the summer? Who were the first countries out to tell the Greeks that they were worth nothing? There's your list. Now, turn the other side around on this one. Let's imagine that you've got a line you can draw from Finland down to Alto Adige, out to Romania, back up through Austria, through Poland, and that's export-led Europe. It's running a surplus against the rest of the world. How, what does France do? What does Italy do? You see, they're very different types of capitalism. These are large consumption-led economies. They're not export-led demand economies. So imagine you've signed something called the Fiscal Compact that says that you've got to run a balanced budget and one part of the currency zone is running an export surplus against the rest of the world. Homework assignment for your international monetary economics class. Go through the identities in the national account and figure out what's got to happen. They've got to run a contractionary policy domestically to offset the surplus. So what you're basically saying is France is going to have to run a near permanent austerity budget the more that Germany and Eastern Europe exports to the rest of the world. Ouch. That doesn't sound like a solution to me.